and into our churches. Every minister of the kingdom is expected to secure victory for himself, for his family, for the church, and for the society. The kingdom is not for the weak. The kingdom is for the strong. The kingdom is not for those who are not ready to fight. The kingdom is for the fighters. In fact, the truth of the, the truth of the matter is that when we say overcomers, these are the concepts that surround an overcomer. That is a conqueror. And it means somebody who are beat or they bat you that conquers. So a conqueror, that's an overcomer. An overcomer is a fixture in another language. An overcomer is a fixture in another language. An overcomer is a winner in another language. An overcomer is the one that triumphs. He's the one that triumph. And an overcomer, he is one we can refer to as Nicholas. The true Nicholas are those who have overcome. I want you to turn with me very quickly in your scripture to the following scripture. And let's see the place of the overcomers in the kingdom. The book of Revelation has almost about eight places where you are going to see that we are able to begin to talk about those who overcome. Those who overcome. Those who overcome. I'm still going to show you those eight places. But let's look at the scripture. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. I will read from verse 1 to 5. Jesus sent a message to a church. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. And you are going to see the expectation of Jesus concerning that church. Just the same way he's expecting the same from us as church today. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1, I read. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1, are you there? Are you there? Okay, if you are not there, are you there? Okay, and to the angel of the church of Sardis, write the word of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your work. You have reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your work complete. In the sight of my God. Remember then what you receive. And heard. Keep it and repent. If you not wake up. I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names inside this. People who have not soiled their garments. And they will walk with me. In white. For they are worthy. They, the one who overcomes. Will be clothed thus in white garments. And I will never blot his name out of the book of life i will confess his name before my father and before his angels now from these other scriptures the kingdom of heaven that we are talking about is for those who overcomes for the kingdom of heaven is for those who overcome there are about seven things as a minister as a christian as a church that god expects us to overcome if we are going to be true overcomers there are about seven things that God expects us to overcome if we are going to be true overcomers. Number one, you need to overcome sin. You must overcome sin. Several scriptures show to us that sin is our enemy. And we must fight with sin until we overcome. I will just give you the scripture because of time. If you read Romans chapter 12 verse 21, it talks about overcoming sin. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 to 9 he also talks about overcoming sin in our life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 25, talks about overcoming the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh, which are sin. So, as an overcomer, you must overcome sin. The truth of the matter is that a minister who has not overcome sin in his personal life has not overcome anything. That is where he starts from. We must strive with sin. Hebrew says that. That we need to strive with sin unto the blood. We have to overcome sin. That's where we can overcome the, our enemies. So that's the first one. Number two enemy. That we need to overcome. First Peter 5 8. We must overcome Satan. He said be sober. Be vigilant. For devil. The adversary. Roars like a lion. We must overcome Satan. Every minister that will be an overcomer must learn to overcome satan and all his cohorts we must overcome satan number three thing you must overcome 
as an overcomer. You must overcome the world. That is the systems of the world. You will see that in First John chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, that talks about overcoming the world. In fact, there is a question in First John chapter 5, verse 5. Who is he that overcome the world? He's the one that believed that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So we must overcome the world. That is as to the culture, the systems of the world. As a believer, as a Christian, as a minister, you must overcome those systems of the world. You must not be ruled by the elements and the forces of the world. Number four thing that we need to overcome, we must overcome powers of darknesses. Ephesians 6, 12 says so. Ephesians 6, 12 says so, that we rescue not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. I want to pray a prayer for somebody who is ready to say amen this afternoon. Power to overcome the wicked ones in your community. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five thing we must overcome. To be true overcomers. We must overcome the flesh. We must overcome the flesh. And that is, can I be found in Romans chapter 6 verse 6? Romans chapter 6 verse 12. We must overcome the flesh. That is the desires and the cravings of the flesh. Then we must overcome temptations. Temptation. We must overcome temptation. The fact that you are a minister does not guarantee that you are going to be immune from temptation. Even our master Jesus Christ, the Bible recorded in Hebrew, that he was tempted in any, every way, yet without sin. We must overcome temptation. And the last enemy we must overcome to be true overcomers, we must overcome deaths. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 26 talks about that. Where the question was asked, death, where is thy power? Because we must overcome death. I pray for somebody who is here, who is saying the loudest, amen. May you overcome all these enemies in Jesus' name. During the earthly life ministry, sovereign death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, he gained victory. He overcame the machinations, plot and plan, and wise of the enemy in whatever form. And even the Bible recorded that. Colossians 2.15 says that, having destroyed principalities, he made a shoe of them. Try be over them in it. In 1 John 3.8, the Bible recorded that Jesus Christ overcame. In the same vein, every genuine believer and minister is expected to overcome, prevail, triumph, and be victorious over the devil and challenges of life. You can see those strong words there. Not just the devil alone, but the challenges of life. You must become a victor, a victoria. So if you are a minister, your name should be a victor. That is as a male minister. And if you are a woman, female minister, your name should be a pastor, Mrs. Victoria, because you are an overcomer. Or at best, Pastor Nicholas, because you are an overcomer. He said, the challenges of life, believers are not to live defeated, fail, limited, and dominated life. In Christ Jesus, we must overcome and reign in life. You can read those scriptures. Overcome. The word overcome is from the Greek word mekao. To be a victor. To be a champion. To be a conqueror. To defeat. To master. To overwhelm. To surpass and prevail. Either in, athlet in athletics or military campaign. To mekao is a personal responsibility of every believer. Sir, to overcome, despite the fact that Christ has won the victory for us, yet to overcome, you need to exercise that victory. If you just sit down and say, hey, you just has conquered for me, I don't need to engage in any spiritual fight, you will be defeated by the enemies. It is a call to fight as a soldier of light over darkness, to prevail over every external or internal voice, to inflict the enemy in every territory of your life and ministry, to defeat every enemy attack in your finances, family, and health. The church is to nekao every devil imagination against her. Citizens of Christ's kingdom must be committed to victory over their foes and continue to overcome. Christ calls us to be permanently and consistently on the tab in overcoming and obtaining victory in every area of our lives and ministry. Victories can be swift, prolong, delay, long first for, but very sure. Please can you look at your neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor, say victories, 
can be swift, can be prolonged, can be delayed, can be long fought for, but very sure. So look at that and say, neighbor, surely you are a fixture. Say, neighbor, surely you are an overcomer in the name of Jesus. Why overcomers? Why should we be overcomers? You must overcome here if you want to reign in heaven. The degree of your victory living here will be the degree of your reign in heaven. There are several scriptures that establish that heaven is for those who overcome. Heaven is for those who overcome. And you must overcome those seven things before you can be say, you can say, truly, I am an overcomer. Nikau is much needed here because many are still being defeated by the followings. We have many people today, many Christians today, many ministers today that sin are defeated them. Sicknesses and secret courts are defeated many. If I, in the course, in the few years I've been in ministry, I've met ministers that were defeated by one sin or the other, and they will say, man of God, you never believe, this is what is happening to me. I want to pray for somebody that want to shout the loudest amen. If there is any sin in your life that is overcoming you, as you listen to this message, become an overcomer over that sin in the name of Jesus. So, temptation, trials, and total darkness is everywhere. And that's why we must overcome. There are patterns of evil and calamities and failures everywhere. Most of the calamities and failures that happen in our churches, they are not God-made. They are evil. They are the enemies made. And God expects us to do something about it. I normally say this to pastor. When I was a pastor, pastor over a church, fully, one of the reasons why I go to mountain every day in and every year, every month I go into mountain is because I can't stand seeing my members being fiction forever. You are pastor in a church, in a church of 200 members, 12, 12 mature lady, 30, 50, they are no, no husband to marry. Why? Because one demon is harassing them. And you come every Sunday, you are not challenged by that. Most of the members of your church, they are jobless. Because one power is keeping them at the corner. And you are so satisfied doing nothing about that. We should be challenged by what the enemy has done. Can you tell your neighbor, say the enemy has done too much. Say enough is enough. But we will only be able to help these people when we are saved, we are overcomers. Devil, demons, and death everywhere. Even inside church today, devils and demons are coming in. We have churches. We have cases of churches. We have somebody in the church confessed to witchcraft and said, I am the one causing all the calamity in the church. And yet you are the pastor of that church. I was not yet ordained as a pastor when I discovered the evil that devil can do in the church. Because at that particular time, they only refer to us in our own churches as evangelists. We were young evangelists. And we, because we believe in deliver ministry, we go from one church to the other, ministering deliverance. And there's this church that invited us at Yanopaja. And we went there. And when we got to that church, the first day we ministered, it was awesome. We could see some manifestation. But as we were finishing that day, I remember the seed of God told me, said, tell them the enemy will reinforce tomorrow. So I got on my people, I said, the Lord said, the enemy is going to reinforce tomorrow. We need to prepare more. So we put ourselves into fasting and prayer, and we came the second day. The second day, the service was already on. The minister of God, we invited the one who is the host pastor, a reverend, he was already a reverend. And by that time, we were just brothers. And he was in the church. Praise and what was going on, as we just enter into the gate of that church like this, the church secretary, something carried her up. Da! I said, I'm a witch. Another person, somebody carried her up. Da! Confessor started, began in the church. And that lady said, she said, I came because they instructed me yesterday at our meeting that I should come and attack you people. But as you were coming, his word, as, as I wanted to attack you, his word came and destroyed my cauldron. That's why I am exposed. I want to pray for somebody here. From today, you are going to carry an anointing that will expose the enemy. Many of you don't know that part of the anointing you need to carry as a servant of God is the anointing to disgrace the enemy. The Bible says, that's Colossians 2.15. 
Heaven destroyed principality and power. What is the first thing that happened? He made a public show. Another word for that public show is he disgraced them. I say from today, anywhere you get to, the enemy shall be disgraced. In the mighty name of Jesus. They can't be beaming in your church and you are the pastor of that church. I said it to some of my people at the back there this morning. I said, when devil is your gate man in your church, devil is your gate man in your church, Satan will always be a regular member. And what I mean by that is that even the usher that usher for you is an agent of darkness. So his father is Satan. So anytime Satan comes, say, my father, you are welcome. Come into the church. And many of our churches, we have all these people, they are inside. And you are still the reverend. Reverend. Reverend over demons possess. And you are doing nothing about it. A power is coming upon somebody here. When you go back to that church, every agent of darkness shall be exposed. I said there shall be disgrace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, enough of nonsense. Barrenness, stagnation, and retrogression. That is so rampant in many of our churches today. You are a pastor of a church. One year, two years, the church never grow. And you have been there. Nothing happened. Some people are even at the edge of packing up. A friend of mine who happened to be a pastor in the apostolic church. He told me a story of a pastor who pastor a church for 37 years. And at that 37 years, he had less than 12 members. And he, he dropped, he, 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 he went to a Koyu mountain. And the only prayer is, God, take me home. I am tired. God, take me home. I am tired. And he was fasting, dry fasting. One day, two days, three days. Most of our long fasting, they are product of ignorance. And when God noticed that this guy was serious to die. Because sometimes, like when you say, God, I want to die. God may not be sure where you are going to die until you put yourself into some of this dry fasting. So he put himself in dry fasting and God said, God appeared to him in a dream. He said, you say you want to die? He said, yes, I'm ready to die. 37 years ministry, 12 member. Nothing to show for. I want to die. And God said, before you die, let me show you something. I'm going to show you something. And so God showed him a vision. He saw that he was cultivating Eve's he will cultivate 200 ifs. A masquerade will come and scatter the ifs. He will cultivate some other ifs. A masquerade will come and scatter the ifs. So he woke up. So God told him, he said, look, I am not the one responsible for the non-growth of your church. There are forces. Those are the masquerade. And by the time, he said, but God showed me the masquerade. God said, if I show you the masquerade, you will never believe. And by the time we go, we open his eye to see the masquerade. Because there were many masquerades. The head of the masquerade happened to be his own wife. That was when he said, God, I changed the prayer. I'm no more dying. I want to start my deliverance ministry for my wife. According to my friend, this man of God went home to deliver the wife. And that was the beginning of the growth of that church. I want to pray for somebody here. Every demon around you, around your church, in the growth of your church, under this awesome anointing, that demon shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. This is despair and devastation. Thank God they talk about, about earth in the morning. Yes, sir. There are many things that, are de that demons are the ones responsible for. Many sicknesses. Demons are behind it. Then witchcraft, bewitchment, and destruction is so common in the church. God inspired Paul. He was writing a letter to the Galatian church. The history says that Galatian church he was one of the good church in those days. But he was writing to them in Galatians chapter 3. And said, oh foolish Galatians. Who had bewitched you? They were Christian. Yeah, they were bewitched. So these things are real. Pains and poverty and squalor. Your future is assured. Because Christ has not seen a condition you cannot change. A life cannot be transformed. A, a life a life you cannot transform. A problem you cannot solve. A devil you cannot deal with. Can you look at your neighbor? Say that devil. Say that devil that harasses your church. God is about to deal with that devil. In the mighty name of Jesus. A covenant he cannot break. And the, the farthest place he cannot reach. Let me ask something very quickly within the 10 minutes I have. To tell you eight benefits 
for the overcomers. There are eight scriptural benefits for the overcomers. You find the first one, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. It will give you access to read the tree of life. For the Bible says, Whoever has and hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the, to the church. He said, To the one that overcome, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So when you only overcome, that's how you can have access to eat the tree of life. Number two, benefits of the overcomers. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Freedom from second death. That was also say, He who has and hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the Lord, to the church. The one who overcome will not be all by the second death. So it is when you overcome that you have assurance that you are free from the second death. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. That's the third one. And that one will give you access to eating manna and a name that is eating with a white stone. Eating, ma eating manna and a name that is eating in a white stone. I want to have that name. Eating in a white stone. The Bible recorded there that it's only known to those to whom it is given. Revelation chapter 2 verse 26. That's the fourth one. The fourth benefit of those who overcome. He said, the one who overcome and who keep my, my works until the end. To him I will give authority over the nations. It means those who overcome are the ones that we have authority over nations. I pray for somebody here. I pray for somebody here. Power to overcome and have authority over nations. Receive it in the name of Jesus. When I got to this very level, what I told myself is that this is not only talking about heaven alone. He's talking about now. Those who are taking land, taking nation for the Lord, they are those who have overcome. The end of Jesus, verse 5. That talks about white garment and a new, a new, a, in the book of life. White garment and a name that is going to be permanent in the book of life. Then, three, verse 12. That one talks about the pillars in the temple of God. He said, Those who overcome, I will make them pillars in the temples of God. And number seven, Revelation 3, verse 21. He said, God, He will give them a seat at God's throne. He said, Those who overcame, I will grant them to sit with me on my throne. Even also as I have overcome, and I sat with my father on the throne. And the last benefit, scriptural benefit, Revelation 21, verse 7, divine heritage. Divine heritage. He said, Those who overcame, we have this heritage and I will be his God and I will be my son. I pray for somebody who is going to shout the, la the biggest amen. May you overcome in the name of Jesus. What are factors for victors? In other words, what are the principles of those who are going to be victors? Number one factor, believe in the victory of Christ over Satan. I know many pastors, I know many fathers today who don't believe that, that Christ has won a victory over Satan. I remember very well when we went to uh, deliverance school for the first time, one of our spiritual father in the Lord discouraged us so much. He told us, he said, devil is sitting gently in his own house and you people are looking for his trouble. He said, you don't know devil? He said, for your information, devil is not, is not the mate of anybody great-grandfather. He told us those things about devil. So, people like that don't believe that even Christ has won the victory and that victory has been parted to us. So, the first place where I start from, you must believe. You must believe. Because it is what you believe that you achieve. If you believe that your own Christ has never defeated Satan, then you are going to be defeated. Number two, believe you can overcome. Please look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Say, believe. That you can overcome. Say, neighbor, believe that you can overcome. The scripture says, This is confidence we have in Him. You should have a confidence in your God that you are an overcomer. I do tell people, I said, Ever since I gave my life to Christ, I've never once doubted whether I'm going to make heaven or not. Thank you, sir. I've never once doubted whether I'm going to make heaven or not. I know, because the Bible says, I know whom I believe. That he is able to keep that which I have committed unto his hand unto the perfect day. Can you say to your neighbor, say I believe. Say I will overcome. It doesn't matter the temptation. Say it doesn't matter the temptation. It doesn't matter the enemy. I will overcome. And you shall overcome in Jesus name. Then number three. Don't ever give up to defeat and delusionment. A lot of people have given up. Number four. Consider your life totally to cry Jesus. Stand upon God's promises. Don't give room or concede ground to Satan. 
one of the reasons why many ministers are defeated there are too many rooms in your life for devil let me run through those room, rooms and we are going to pray because of time these are things that are rooms and parlor for devil in the life of a minister that make me start to fail number one sin any sin in our life is a room in fact it's a room and parlor to devil number two two number two unforgiveness whenever a minister cannot forgive it is a room and parlor or even a flat for devil to operate number three very quickly is worry when you are too worried you are worried about life you have anxiety about life it gives room for devil to stop you from overcoming number four unbelief any iotas of unbelief in your life is a very strong instrument in the hand of the enemy against you and number five is unbroken covenants there are many ministers they have one covenant or the other either consciously or unconsciously with the devil they have not been broken but today by the auction upon my life by the auction upon our dad in the lord dr francibola like john everyone carrying unbroken covenant and you are in this auditorium that covenant is broken in the name of jesus number six is ignorance ignorance very strong instrument in the hand of the enemy it gives room for the enemy to operate that was why apostle paul wrote second Corinthians 2 11 he said we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy least he will take an advantage of us anytime you are ignorant about the devil he gives devil an advantage over your life number seven causes any causes that is not broken in your life is a room for devil to operate number eight satanic altar maybe in your family like gideon you have some altar there where your name and the names of members of the family have been put into if you don't go by spirit spiritually pray on those altar and destroy those altar nothing you do that will give you victory over the enemy and number nine evil dedication if there is any evil dedication in your life that you have not destroyed he's going to have, make the enemy to have power over your life number 10 evil name we have pastors who still bear name with the devil thank god our dad in the lord talk about that he told us about his own personal name so if you need to sometimes change your name probably change your name but you gotta change your name if you want to have victory over the enemies number 11 satan's property when there is any property of devil in your life it will give devil a chance to operate jesus said the prince of this world came he could do nothing to me because he found nothing in me and number 12 evil foundations evil foundations psalm 11 to the if the foundation be destroyed what would the righteous do then number 13 pride pride and the last one there is disobedience or rebellion any of these 14 things they are they give devil a rooms in our life i want to pray a prayer for somebody here every way by which devil had come into your life may the fire of the holy ghost chase devil out in the name of jesus i want to end with this one to be an overcomer we must keep resisting devil we must keep fighting resisting devil first peter 5 8 says submit yourself unto the lord and resist the devil and he will flee from you look at your neighbor say neighbor say resist say resist the devil say submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you let me show you how devil operates in fact i discovered in my personal study all the names by which devil were called in the bible they were not friendly names like for example genesis chapter 3 verse 1 call him old serpent i know i know you know serpent is not very friendly matthew 13 verse 5 call him a destructive board belt and you know destructive belt that's the board that comes to destroy your harvest it's not a good one john 10 12 calls him a wolf you know what a wolf is first peter 5 8 call him a a, a fierce lion like a fierce lion so and you know what a fierce lion can look like then Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 to 9 call him a dragon so all this shows that devil is never never very friendly but let me share a research story with you and we are going to take our prayer point from there some scientists they began to do a study about devil relationship between devil and snake and they pick a particular snake they call a snake and this is what they discover about ratu snake a ratu snake after you kill a ratu snake and you cut off the head of ratu snake that snake after you cut off the head can still bite you in 60 minutes after that is to say that a rattlesnake that you, you pick and you cut off the head and you think everything is done, in one hour, that snake can still bite. In fact, they did that research and also that discovered that most people that were beaten, 
by snake. They were not beaten by living snake. They were beaten by rattlesnakes that their heads were cut off. So they went to do a research. And all that. A rattlesnake cut off the head. In another one hour, you can see bite. And they conclude that that is the way devil operates. Devils have been bruised. Jesus had bruised his head on the tree of Calvary. Jesus had defeated the devil. His head had been cut off. But the devil can see bites if you don't exercise your authority. The devil can see bites if you don't watch. The devil can see bites if you are not careful. If you don't know what to do, that devil is still a dangerous devil. I pray that today, in every way the devil wants to say, he wants to come and bite your life, your ministry, God will give us victory in the name of Jesus. Can you stand up on your feet before your next neighbor? And you are going to shout this prayer point. You will shout this other prayer point. He takes a fighting spirit to be an overcomer. He takes a fighting spirit to be an overcomer. There is what we call positive fighting spirit that make you to be an overcomer. That's why the Bible says, fight a good fight of faith. The fight you want to fight now is a good fight of faith. You will close your eyes and you are going to shout. You are going to shout. Say, every satanic power. You are not praying. Say every satanic power. Assign. Against my life. My family. I destroy your power now. Pray us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Talk to God in prayers. Talk to God in prayers. Talk to God in prayers. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Two more prayer points quickly before I leave here, and I want to pray it very well. The issue of spiritual warfare is more real with us here than any other place in the whole world. Because our own demonic power here, they are black demonic powers. So because of that, I want to pray this very prayer point and pray it very well. There are many of us that are struggling in ministry, not because God wants your ministry to be struggling, but because you don't do anything when it comes to spiritual warfare. You pray, I'm not saying you pray. There are prayers and there are prayers. So I want you to pray this very prayer point. Say any power. Say any territorial power. Operating against the growth of my church. What are you waiting for? Die! Prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Talk to God in prayers. Territorial power or pressing against the good of my church begin to die, begin to die in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. There are two books recommended for you there spiritual warfare for church growth. Please go and get that book. Overcoming at the gate of that, go and get those books. They will open your eyes more to some of these things that we are talking about. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Say, wicked power. You are not saying it. Say wicked power. power. Following my life. To defeat me. Enough is enough. Go back and never return. Pray us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the wicked power following my life. To defeat me. Go back and never return. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, when Dr. Dan was teaching, he mentioned foundations. There are powers that chased and overcame some of our fathers in the Lord that are still chasing us. And I want you to pray. Every powers of the enemy that overcame my forefathers that overcame those who have gone ahead of me by the authority of the Lord. I destroy you in the name of Jesus. Shall we turn into prayers? Lord, every powers that overcome those who have gone ahead of us, satanic powers, satanic forces, satanic strongholds, 
demons and the evil spirits by the authority of the lord we are commanded to fall in the name of jesus we decree your failure thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed prophesy over your life that i will remain a victor i will remain an overcomer no devil no demon no sin no temptation we overcome me life by the grace of the lord i shall keep overcoming shall we confess that confess it over your life every day i remain a conqueror every day i remain an overcomer i overcome the devil i overcome sin i overcome worldliness i overcome flesh i overcome problems i overcome poverty i overcome sickness i overcome diseases in the name of jesus i receive fresh grace to overcome i receive fresh grace to overcome i receive fresh grace to overcome by god's grace every day i rest and overcome her in jesus mighty name we have prayed i decree that which overcome those who have gone over ahead of you it is defeated on your feet in the name of jesus that which will bring them down in your family in your lineage over your life they are defeated in the name of jesus the same story of defeat that those who have gone ahead of you have spoken it shall never be your story it shall never be your history it shall never be your experience i decree a fresh story of victory in the name of jesus i decree a fresh story of victory in the name of jesus i pray we are others have gone ahead of you as falling you will rise you will rise that we shall defeat the ministry that have gone ahead of you shall not defeat your ministry your ministry will succeed your ministry will overcome every other day of life i decree you more than conqueror in the name of jesus receive victory over flesh victory over sin victory over satan victory over evil dreams victory over troubles victory over problem i declare by the reason of the faithfulness of the lord you will not grow weary you will stand strong every day in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray let's take our seat as we take these few bulletins few informations and then we move on for the day